So, here's my analogy. I bought a cake and I cut it into 10 equal slices. And there was a little bit left over, yeah? So um, between Uber and TfL, they took my cake, all of it. And um, they gave me the opportunity to make back at least like somewhere between like four and five slices a day, you know, realistically. And I'm not happy. <laughs> yeah, so um, in terms of the congestion charge, that's what I'm talking about. The London congestion charge for private hire drivers. Um, if you've got a vehicle that um, doesn't qualify and you're having to pay the London congestion charge, um, it's £10.50 a day. Now, um, Uber um, on Friday has said that they will give you one pound, one pound nominal fee um, for every trip that originates in, passes through, or ends in the London congestion charging zone. Yeah. Um, and they're also trying to do something with um, Uber Pool, but they ain't worked it out yet. So they're just going to give you a pan, like when you've completed like your run of trips on um, Uber Pool, um, if it originates or ends or passes through zone one, the congestion charging zone. Um, now, this one pound fee is 24 seven. So there's obviously benefits. Um, if you're used to working um, evenings outside of the London congestion charging times, after 6 p.m. or 6.30, they don't even know what it is. You have to find out, it's really important. <laughs> and um, if you're working like late evenings, um, during the night, um, outside the congestion charging times, um, you're just gonna make an extra pound every time you kind of jump in and out. So that can end up being quite lucrative at the end of the week. You know what I mean? So, I mean, you may make an extra like 25, 30 quid end of the week um, on top of whatever else you earn um, just by maybe picking up and dropping off or passing through the congestion charging zone um, at least five times a day. So on average, um, if you're doing full time and you're on the road for the whole day, um, let's say you do an average of 20 trips in any given day. Um, so if I did 20 trips, I reckon I'll pass through the congestion charging zone at least somewhere between four and six times on average yeah sometimes obviously there's going to be exceptions where you you hit it more times and there's going to be exceptions where you hit it a lot less because you're like way out and no one's taking you in okay so um you're still having to come up with at least half the half the charge now some people got some suggestions what they're going to do um speaking to some people some people are going to camp in zone one until they make their money but um and some people are going to avoid the congestion charge altogether during operational hours. Um, I'm gonna go against the tide. Um, I'm just gonna pay the congestion charge and just keep things running. Um, and just take any job that's given to me, you know? Some people think, because they pay the congestion charge, they have to sit in the zone and pick up um, money in the zone and so on and so forth, and they're not accepting no jobs unless it originates from zone one, so they can earn the extra pound. But all the time you're sitting down waiting, um, I mean, you can get jobs absolutely anywhere, you know? If it's not busy in central London and it's busy elsewhere in the mornings, why are you sitting in zone one? It's not gonna make any sense. Um, yeah, obviously some people are gonna avoid zone one altogether during operational hours or not work in those hours and work in the evenings and during the night. And um, yeah, for me, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna swing it and um, hit every job. Um, I'm not gonna be calling people and asking them where they're going in the morning and so on and so forth. I'm just gonna pick up anybody and take them anywhere they wanna go, drop them off, hit the next job, hit the next job, hit the next job, yeah? So if it, if it means that I'm going into congestion charging zone um, during one or two of my trips, then so be it, you know what I mean? If it's gonna be a small loss, then it's gonna be a small loss, you know what I mean? It's only a temporary loss. Obviously, I can claim back the CC charge against my tax at the end of the financial year, which is the same way if you cross the Dartford Bridge, if you enter the airport, car park you're going to get a receipt yeah you hold that receipt you pull it in against your um with with your tax your end of year tax receipts and you can claim the money back as a reduction against your tax bill for that particular year yeah so um all is not lost all is not lost um if you are <clears throat> avoiding it um you're just going to end up making loads of phone calls. Um, I don't want to wake up in the morning and have to call people and 
have arguments with people who are desperate to get to where they're going in the morning and you're telling them you're asking them where they're going and and then and then you're telling them you're not coming you know and then you're having all these disagreements with people first thing in the morning it's not a good start to your day really you know and i don't really envisage myself doing that day in day out yeah it's going to make the service poor and um you know i mean people are going to get fed up obviously um, but we'll see what happens anyway but for me I'm going to, when the congestion charge comes into effect, I'm just going to pay, uh, regardless of whether I go in the congestion charge um, six times or five times or four times or whatever the case is, I'm just going to pay the congestion charge anyway. That's a, that's going to be another operational cost yeah, for me. Um, but um, I do realise for a lot of people, um, having this extra £10 a day or just over £50 a week, potentially, Monday to Friday, um, it's another, it's an added expense. That's two hundred pounds a month plus um, that you're gonna have to find um, just to just to get through the month, yeah. And that's on top of all the other running costs you got for your vehicle, and I mean whatever lifestyle costs you got, mortgage, rent, children, activities, anything else, yeah. So for some people, it's not going to be feasible to be driving in the congestion charging area during operational hours. And I totally sympathise with you, um, but um, yeah, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, if it means you're going to change your hours or obtain a new vehicle that's exempt from the congestion charge um, at the moment, then um, so be it. So um, good luck to everybody. If you've got any thoughts or opinions or strategies um, that you may be implementing in order to um, um, bring down the cost of the congestion charge or eliminate the cost altogether leave a comment below and um, look forward to hearing your views and for now it's the gig guy london and i'm signing out about to start my day peace